This story is almost too weird to be true. Scientists claim that they have shown it is possible for rats to transmit instructions from one to another by a telepathic-like process of brain-to-brain -brain communication. The mind meld was created when the two animals were connected together via a central digital nervous system. Joining us to discuss this is HuffPost UK technology editor Michael Rundle. Michael, how exactly did this work? Uh, well, actually, it's a, a very simple experiment, which is either really, really interesting or completely terrifying or both. <laughs> um, what you're talking about is a, a network of electrodes, which was implanted into the brains of uh, two rats, one of which was in Brazil and the other in North Car Carolina. And it's, I'll try and explain. One of the rats was uh, tasked with finding water and given some instructions on how to do that. Uh, and the other rat had to find the water but had no instructions. And basically all it had was the brain signal from the rat which knew how to find the water, which was transmitted to its brain. And through that was able to, to find the water more effectively than it would have done otherwise. So what you have is the brain signal being transmitted from one rat to the other, containing the information on how to find the water which uh, is the first time, arguably, that direct communication from the brain of one animal to the other has been achieved, especially over the internet. So, and, yeah, I'm, go on. and I've been really freaked out ever since I found out about it. So. I, I feel like you're, you're right to be freaked out. And what might be even more freaky is the conclusions. I mean, you've talked us through it a little bit, but what can we conclude then? Anything more kind of specific from this experiment? Well, I mean, that's debatable. There, some scientists say that this is a really far-reaching and important experiment. Others say, you know, actually it's something that's been tried before. The main interesting idea from this is something called an organic computer, where you can link the brains of animals and even potentially people one day through the internet or through wires, and through that create a kind of an emergent intelligence which is more powerful than the computers we have now. Um, now this is baby steps towards that. And the scientists involved at Duke University themselves aren't really sure where it's going. Uh, so again, it's, it's early days, but it does point to new ways that we can transmit information and, uh, and use processing information from the brain, uh, which, which is exciting. Egberto, excited? <laughs> uh, actually, I don't know that I believe the study. I thought the brain worked with neurons that are pretty much sort of in a, a, in a network kind of relationship. So how do you get two electrodes to transmit the totality of thought? I mean, I don't know. That's above my pay grade. But if it is, if it is true, wow, that, that, that is a new kind of network. Well, well, to your point, Egberto and Phil, I'd love your thoughts on this. We have iSapien chiming in just 14 seconds ago saying, I'm, I'm guessing the rats had clues you didn't account for. No, animals don't communicate via radio. This is bunk science. What do you think, Phil? I think this could be a really good way for lawyers to communicate in the future. <laughs> but, you know, but, sir, but in, if you remember, during the 1970s, there were two movies. There was Ben and Willard about rats that communicated telepathically with Bruce Davidson, and it did not go well. So I would say tread lightly. When you're organizing rats to, to, to communicate telepathically, humans can only suffer. <laughs> well, I mean, no good, there is no good end game here. There, there really doesn't seem to be one, although there is certainly a heated discussion in our comments section. Believe it or not, iSapien saying, if rats are so smart, why are they so easy to trap on those glue things? Uh, and then Kathy <laughs> responding by saying, He makes a good probably point. Yeah, he makes a good point, but Kathy retorting, rats are some of the most intelligent creatures on the face of the earth and also one of the most resilient species. Isn't it a wonder that poisons have not eliminated them? Any thoughts on that, um, Michael? Well, you know, I think this kind of science is uh, particularly troubling for anyone with an active imagination uh, like me. <laughs> uh, in, in separate experiments, we've already taught ro uh, animals to control robots. Uh, we, there was a recent experiment a month ago in which a moth was taught to control a robot on the other side of the world. Oh. You know, we really don't know what we're doing here. I think we sh maybe should take the advice and, uh, and step back a little bit. But on the other hand, it is interesting science. It could point the way to some really interesting things in the future. So, you know, if there's one thing science teaches us, it's never stop uh, pushing something just because you're really, really freaked out about it. No, is it data analog or digital? It's actually analog. So they... Uh, they simplified the brain signal from the animals um, into a very simple system of, of short pulses or long pulses. Okay. Uh, and using that, use that as a stimulus to teach the other rats. So it wasn't 
the you know the the thought itself. It was a, a simplified version, but again, points the way to something potentially more interesting in the future. I got you. Michael, Makes more uh, sense now. Michael, I, I have to tell you, uh, well, before I, I kind of say to you what I want to, this is something I, it caught my eye a couple days ago. I don't know if you can see my screen. Giant rats sniff wow. out landmines. This is in Mozambique. <laughs> um, so I feel like, you know, this is the first time, Michael, that you join us here at HuffPost Live. We, we're always happy to have you. So next time, if you could update us on the, the rats and the mines, we would, we would greatly appreciate it. Um, oh, but, of course. Go ahead. Well, you know, in, in, in the U.S. military, you've already used, uh, we use dogs very regularly, but dolphins and whales have already been employed in, in the services. So you know, maybe rats are the next big thing. Yeah, rats, walruses, who knows. Michael, thank you so much for joining us. Up next, the latest from rats to Hugo Chavez.